Plants are essential to life. The air we breathe, the food we eat, even the climate we've grown accustomed to is intimately tied to the very bottom of the food web. But it is in the ocean where we find the most diverse plant life. They're just much harder to see. We know them as plankton, the bottom of the marine food web. While they're all microscopic, these photosynthesizers can vary in size as much as a thin blade of grass does from a towering redwood tree. And like these plants on land, plants in the ocean need just the right conditions to grow, access to abundant sunlight and nutrients. Especially in a warming ocean, where a strong layer forms at the surface, keeping the much needed nutrients that sink to depth from fertilizing the sunlit surface above. That's why these scientists have been focusing their efforts on the shelf break front off the northeastern coast of the US. This band of high biological productivity seems to ride the line of the continental shelf, where the colder, fresh inshore waters meet the warmer, salty waters offshore, forming a front. These ribbons of upwelling bring nutrients to the surface, promoting the growth of the larger plankton that more directly feed the fish, seabirds, and mammals we know so well. One of the really exciting features that we have found uh, is this uh, bit of water here that was sampled by only one station. It's got very salty and warm water. What's very exciting is that just above that, there appears to be high chlorophyll biomass, indicating this is a hot spot in productivity. Although we have a sense for the fact that the ecosystem is thriving in this ribbon of the shelf break front, we're still trying to understand the processes that lead to that. What is so striking about this region, though, is how variable it is. Still not yet. Yet. Oh, look at that fluorescence. Oh, oh no! Pam, please bring CDD up to surface. The front is very dynamic. It meanders a lot. It's a little bit like the rivers zigzagging on land. So as the front moves back and forth, at some phase of the wave, you have this upwelling. And another phase of the wave, you actually have downwelling. So right at these interfaces, we have these vertical motions, and that potentially stimulate biological productivity and also exporting carbon into the deep ocean. One of the things that we're most excited about right now is this huge diatom bloom on the offshore edge of the front. We don't really know what's creating that. And diatoms are among the largest of the phytoplankton, and we think they're setting up for a food web that's efficient at producing things like fish. So these are diatoms. All of these things that are kind of arced are diatoms of different species. And these hot spots are places where lots of diatoms seem to be growing and dominating the phytoplankton community. Very exciting. This Remus 600 was just deployed to the south of the Shelf Creek front where we observed a hot spot in chlorophyll. We were expecting to see one to three chlorophyll units. And when all of a sudden the meter goes up to 26, that's pretty exciting. And uh, that gets us very energized to better understand how these blooms work, why they're here and not there. It's like a detective chase. An array of moorings across the continental shelf detect variations throughout the year. But what scientists can do at sea is chase fronts as they emerge. Rings of water that shed from the Gulf Stream far offshore and move westward into the shelf break. This system is often affected by this big eddy coming from the Gulf Stream. We call it warm core rain. And the rain is able to draw shelf water directly offshore. So it's generated this so-called shelf water streamer. 
This bloom of diatoms is right on the eastern side of the streamer, and it's in a very narrow strip that's less than 10 kilometers wide. The main question we're after now is, does that diatom bloom extend all the way along the edge of the continental shelf? Knowing the extent of these blooms caused by frontal upwelling can tell us something about the productivity of this region, especially as the climate continues to warm. Because as they photosynthesize, not only do phytoplankton produce oxygen, they also take up carbon that could sink and get locked away in the seafloor. Carbon is the backbone of life. And so understanding the flux of carbon from CO2 into the phytoplankton is absolutely essential to understand how fast things are growing, understand the different pathways that that carbon can take within an ocean ecosystem. So then I can say, well, if you're taking carbon off the shelf to deeper water, what's going to happen to that carbon? It's going to sink. It's going to be sequestered. One of the things that's very surprising is how productive it is in summer and it's as productive as it is in the spring. I certainly did not expect that. By summertime, most of the nutrients, namely nitrogen and phosphorus, will have been used up by the larger plankton. And as the surface ocean warms, it gets capped off, otherwise known as a stratified layer, a barrier to nutrients traveling upwards from depth. As the ocean continues to warm with climate change, these layers that are sort of capped off near the surface, they may persist for longer over the course of the year, so it'll be sort of like summer is extended. One hypothesis is that we may find fewer places with diatom hotspots and more and more places may be dominated by these tiny phytoplankton. Tiny plankton can eke out any remaining nutrients in depleted waters. But the smaller the plankton, the longer the food chain, and the more energy lost. Their larger diatom counterparts, on the other hand, more directly feed the animals that fish themselves feed upon, the zooplankton. We were hoping to be able to put some numbers on grazing rates and potentially growth rates of certain organisms within the, the plankton community. One of the things that really surprised us was how dramatically different the water masses could be in such a short distance. This is some zooplankton to look at later to see if we can catch some live action. This is the same depth as the other one, but a bigger mesh. You can see it catches bigger stuff. Sometimes when we're on the shelf in relatively cold water, it'll be dominated by the same types of zooplankton that you find in the Gulf of Maine or that you find on the continental shelf throughout much of the year. But then as soon as we get out near the shelf or uh, out on the slope, the water gets warmer in some cases. We start seeing tropical things. I'm seeing zooplankton that I haven't seen since I worked in the Gulf of Mexico. Just another confirmation that the Gulf Stream is bringing up these warmer tropical waters from the south and shedding off eddies that intrude into the shelf break. Though it will take months to years for this research to come together, we know this much. Frontal zones in this region provide just the right conditions for plankton and fish to thrive. What began as a search for life at the edge of the shelf break became a chase for new frontiers of unexpectedly high productivity in the ocean. Mm -hmm.